Hello, YouTubers. This is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today, I'll be doing a review on the Gemini Jets Delta Boeing 737-900ER extended range featuring the split scimitar wings in their current livery scheme and a 1200 scale model. I purchased this model from Easy Toys and their website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, please allow me to share with you some information about the history of Delta Airlines and how they actually came about as an airline carrier. Delta is an American-based airline that was actually founded on March 2, 1925 as Huff Doll Industries Incorporated in Macon, Georgia. Then the company moved to Monroe, Louisiana in 1925 as the Huff Doll Industries Corporation was officially incorporated as Delta Air Service on December 3, 1928. Then officially commenced operations on June 17, 1929, and was officially incorporated as Delta Air Corporation on December 31, 1930, and eventually relocated its corporate headquarters to Atlanta, Georgia sometime in 1941, and operated under the Delta Air Corporation name up until 1945, when the name was eventually changed to what has become known to the world today as Delta Airlines. Delta is currently the eighth oldest operating airline in the world of aviation based on foundation date after KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Avianca, Qantas, Aeroflot Russian Airlines, Czech Airlines, Finnair, and Tajik Air respectively. However, Delta is still considered the oldest operating airline still operating in the United States of America today as Delta is also the largest operating airline in the world when measured in terms of generated revenue, asset value, and market capitalization, as well as the second largest operating airline in the world when measured in terms of fleet size, scheduled passengers, kilometers flown, as well as the number of passengers carried. Whereas the corporate headquarters of Delta, along with its main hub and base of operations, is located on the grounds of Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport, which is located approximately 10 miles south of the downtown district section of Atlanta, Georgia. Delta also has operational hubs that's located at Boston Logan International Airport, located in the Boston suburb of Winthrop, Massachusetts, Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport, located in the Detroit suburb of Romulus, Michigan, Los Angeles International Airport, located in Los Angeles, California, Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, located in Minneapolis, Minnesota, John F. Kennedy International Airport, located in Jamaica, Queens, New York, LaGuardia Airport, located in East Amherst, Queens, New York, Salt Lake City International Airport, located in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Seattle-Tacoma International Airport, located in Seattle, Washington. And the focus city hub of Delta is located at Raleigh-Durham International Airport, located in Cedar Fork Township, Wake County section of North Carolina. At the time of this video review posting, Delta currently flies for 325 destinations worldwide on six inhabited continents, as Delta is one of nine airlines to own this actual distinction for permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, British Airways, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, and United Airlines, respectively, with an operating fleet of 934 aircraft that includes 240 Boeing 737s, in which 77 of those are the Boeing 737-800 variant, and the remaining 163 are the Boeing 737-900ER extended range variant, including this one you're looking at here. And in addition to the 934 aircraft that currently operates in the Delta fleet, Delta also has unfulfilled orders for an additional 311 more aircraft, which includes 100 of the next generation Boeing 737 MAX 10s, and those aircraft, as we speak, are currently on back order and are awaiting delivery. Also at the time of this video review posting, Delta is one of 148 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified three-star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm, Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for Delta for this particular aircraft is 32. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box, and what you're looking at is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the Delta logo, the Delta title, the Sky Team logo, the computer-generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1-200 scale diecast model aircraft, as well as the item number information that you see at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the back of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, and some more information, the Boeing official license product decal, as well as the social media pages of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, okay? 
Now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the adult collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. All right, now you're looking at the bottom of the box, which you see the, the flat button box, as well as the G Gemini 200 gold decal. All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, which you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1200 scale diecast model and item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type on the left side of the box. All right, now you're looking at the right side of the box. It's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I just showed you earlier on, okay? All right, now you're looking at the front of the box, but this time I got it laid down on the table here. And remember, it's flap here I showed you earlier. So I'm going to flip that up and let you see inside the, uh, the packaging box. Check it out. That is the uh, foam that covers the aircraft model and accessories. That's the tripod stand. I'm not going to do a review on that one. And that's the, uh, the foam right there that protects the model. And I'm going to take this out and let you see what's inside the package box. Check it out. All right, after taking the foam, this is what it looks like inside the packaging box. See the actual aircraft model as well as the uh, the gear replacement doors inside that uh, plastic bag there. I'll go into detail for the sole purpose of those gear replacement doors in this model review, okay? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of Delta Airlines and how they actually came out as an airline carrier and still continue to operate strongly as we speak, plus all the details here at the front of the box as well as the packaging, and with no further ado, here is the actual model out of the packaging box. Check it out. There it is, everyone. The Gemini Jets Delta, born 737-900ER, extended range, featuring the split scimitar wings in their 120 scale model in their current livery scheme. All right, allow me to share with you some information about this livery scheme you see on this aircraft. This is Delta's current livery scheme, which is actually called Upward and Onward, as this livery scheme was actually introduced on April 30, 2007, after the airline emerged from bankruptcy restructuring, as this livery continued to honor Delta's past heritage, while at the same time reflecting a modern look for an airline that, was act that is totally focused on the overall experience. So, with that said about this livery scheme, let's get down to the nitty gritty and allow me to share with you the rest of the details on this aircraft model, okay? So let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port side. Left side, we're going to start at the front where you see the front nose landing gear right here. You see the nose gear door. You see the pier tools and the static ports right there. The radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those details later on in the model review. But we're going to start at the front nose landing gear door. You see the E-tops information right here on the front nose gear landing door. The acronym for ETOP literally stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, which is actually a certification that permits twin engine aircraft such as this one to fly routes which may be at least 60 minutes flying time from the nearest airport that is actually suitable for an emergency landing. And then you see the uh, 3891, the number displayed next to the on the nose gear door right next to the um, ETOP information right there. And 31 is the actual fleet number, as this particular fleet number can also be visibly seen on the tail fin of the aircraft. I'll show you that later, okay? And then you're looking right next to the uh, L1 entrance door is the Sky Team logo, which is this nice-looking logo you see there. And Delta became a member of the Sky Team Alliance, along with Aerial Mexico, Air France, and Korean Air, as one of the four founding members on June 22, 2000, which consists of 18 airline members from five inhabited continents. And then on the right side of the L1 uh, entrance door is the most awarded airline hashtag Delta Proud decal, which is displayed next to the L1 entrance door, which is this right there. And this particular decal indicates that Delta has become recognized as the most awarded airline in the United States of America by Fortune Magazine, Glassdoor, U.S. News, Traveler, Business Travel News, Business Travel Awards, The Point Guy, OAG Punchiality Lead, First Company, CR Magazine, and Air Cargo Excellence, which is actually based on airline performance, consistency, diversity, as well as leadership. And now you're looking at the red rigid logo that sits next to the Delta title, which is this little famous logo right there. 
This is Delta's current logo and the modern updated three-dimensional red widget logo was unveiled and introduced on April 30, 2007. The same day that Delta emerged from bankruptcy restructuring and at the same time continued to honor the heritage of the most famous version of the Delta widget logo that was actually introduced in 1959. All right, now looking at the center of the aircraft and, and underneath the wings, see the nice looking landing gears right here. They painted in blue, the wheels there are blue. And then there's the nose gear door. But more importantly, see these nice big massive engines here. And these are the CFMI-CFM56-7B27E turbofan type engines that are used on this particular Delta Boeing 737-900ER extended range narrow body jetliner aircraft. You'll see the engine cones right there. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around and let you see the front of the engines. Unfortunately, the turbo fan blades do not spin on this particular aircraft, but I'm going to let you check it out anyway. So let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side of the aircraft where you see the engine strikes right over here on this side of the air engines right there. And unfortunately, like I mentioned, the turbo fan blades on this aircraft do not spin, but... The fan blade look realistic and appealing to say the least. And then you see the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. And you see the inboard landing light you see there on the edge of the wing there as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines on the starboard side. You see the engine strikes right there. Unfortunately, the turbo fan blades do not spin on the side here either. But you got the front visual view of the uh, landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear door. And then there's the inboard landing light you see on the edge of the wing as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft. You got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radon nose cone, the front nose landing gear door, the landing gear lights inside of the landing gear doors, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. Okay. All right, and we're still at the center of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the um, wingtip devices on this aircraft right here, as well as the red navigation light. And these highly advanced wingtip devices are actually called the split scimitar winglets. And the split scimitar winglets was actually launched and made by Aviation Partners Boeing, a subsidiary of Boeing sometime in 2013. And the sole purpose of these split scimitar wings is to actually help reduce fuel consumption, improve aerodynamics, and enhance aircraft efficiency at the same time. As Chicago-based United Airlines became the first airline in the world, as well as being the actual launch customer, to have the split scimitar wingtip devices installed on their Boeing 737-800 aircraft on February 18, 2014. All right. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side. And what you're looking at first is the American flag decal, which is this looking good-looking decal you see there. And this flag decal represents the country where Delta currently operates from as one of the major flag carrier airlines of the United States of America. And then next to the uh, American flag decal is the actual registration ship number, which is November 891 Delta North, November. All right. Registration ship number, November 891, Delta November. This particular aircraft is actually the 91st Boeing 737-900ER extended range nearby jetliner aircraft that actually entered the Delta fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on February 10, 2018 and was delivered to Delta on February 23, 2018. All right, now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft, which features the 3891, as I mentioned earlier. That is the actual fleet number you see here. And the Delta logo that's displayed on this uh, tail fin of the aircraft, it actually symbolizes this iconic logo pointing in a northwest direction due to the airline's merger with Northwest Airlines, which took place on October 29, 2008. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the APU, which literally stands as auxiliary power unit exhaust hole right here. And then there's the strobe light sits right above the uh, APU exhaust hole, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Check it out. There it is. Ain't it awesome? All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side. What you're looking at is the front nose landing gears. The landing gear door featuring the fleet number and the E-tops 
uh, information there. See the Peter tubes and the static ports, what have you. The radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window, the Sky Team uh, logo, the Delta billboard title, the red widget logo, as well as the front boat being door you see there. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft here on the starboard side and underneath the wings is the landing gears right here, the landing gear doors, as well as the nice looking CFMI, CFM56. Dash 7B27E turbofan type engines you see there with the engine cones right there. And then there's the split scimitar winglet wingtip device. I'm about to show you that right now. All right, now you're looking at the split scimitar winglet featuring the green navigation light you see right next to the uh, split scimitar winglet wingtip device. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft. What you see is the rear bolt bend door, the American flag decal. The registration ship number, as well as the Delta widget logo displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft and the fleet number as well. Check it out. There it is. Awesome. All right. Before I show you this aircraft model from the area of bird's eye view, as well as the undercarriage belly view in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. Just check it out. It rolls pretty good. It does tilt. As you can see there, and the front nose landing gear as well. Yeah, it, it tilts as well. They tilt, they turn as well. They swivel, turn a little bit as well. So, with that being said, let's check this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view. Check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft from the aerial bird's eye view. We're gonna start at the front as always, where you see the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. Then you come along here. See the Sky Team decal on both sides of the aircraft, the Delta title, as well as the widget logo on both sides. Then you look at the top of the aircraft. You see the uh, anti collision beacon light, the satellite communications antenna, another high frequency antenna, the Wi Fi box antenna, another high frequency antenna, and then there's the registration ship number, the American flag decal on both sides. And that's the tail fin of the aircraft, as well as the horizontal stabilizer on both sides here. And that little black dot right there, as well as over here on the horizontal stabilizer, those are actually called illuminated lights. And the sole purpose of these illuminated lights is that it actually light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now let's check out the wings and the engines from above. See the wing walkway. Then you see the top of the engines there. And then you see the flaps, slats, ailerons, boards, what have you. You see the... Uh, Fuel dump valve right there, as well as the top of the split scimitar wing, wing tip device. Now let's check out over here. The wing walkway, the engines, as well as the flap, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. As well as the top of the split scimitar winglet and the fuel dump valve on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model, it's mostly white and blue, as you can see. We're going to start at the front there as well. You see the 737-900, uh, that's the aircraft variant. And then you see the front nose landing gear door, as well as the front nose landing gear. And then you come here where it's mostly blue, you see a high frequency antenna. You see the Delta uh, title and the widget logo. The hole where the stand goes in at. The anti-collision beacon light. Another high frequency antenna, the Gemini Jets logo, pressure lead valve, the tail skid bumper, the APU housing door, and the horizontal stabilizers underneath. Now let's check out the gears there, the engine underneath there, as well as the wings underneath, which includes the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you, as well as the uh, lower part of the split scimitar wing, wing tip device you see there. Now let's check out the gears over here. The gears, the engines, as well as the wings underneath, which includes the flap, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you, as well as the lower part half of the split scimitar wing that you see there as well. All right. Since I show you this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view as well as the undercarriage belly view in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that alternative model stand you see there that I usually do my uh, Gemini uh, jet model reviews with. 
So with no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Check it out. All right, fine, got this model on this alternative model stand. As you see, no problem, no hesitation. As you see it being displayed in takeoff landing position. Now I'm gonna allow this uh, aircraft model to rotate in a clockwise rotation, starting with the port side, then the tail cam angle, then the uh, starboard side, then the front of the aircraft and back to the port side. Check it out. All right, I'm not going to go into the uh, details about the uh, gear replacement doors. I'll show them to you real, real, real briefly. Okay, here they are right here, what I showed you in the packaging box earlier. That right there. Now, you got one or two options how you want to display your model. You can't take them off, though. If you want to display without the gears in flight mode position, that's fine. That, and you see these gear replacement doors inside this plastic bag. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors. So you substitute your aircraft model. You display your model like this in flight mode position. Or you can do like I do, keep them in the gear down position. Gears up, gear down, your choice. I choose mine to keep mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and take this model off the stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review, okay? All right, the seating configuration. Delta has three seating configurated cabin layout versions that they actually use on their Boeing 737-900ER extended range nearby jetliner aircraft. However, this particular Delta Boeing 737-900ER extended range nearby jetliner aircraft seats 180 passengers in a three-class configurated cabin layout. All right, everyone, here's the breakdown from rows one to five, which will be about from here to about right there, you have 21st class seats, rows 10 to 13, which will be about from here to about right here. You have 21 Delta Comfort Plus class seats in rows 14 to 37, which will be about from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 139 economy class seats, which brings a total of 180 seats. And finally, Delta currently employs this aircraft or have previously utilized this particular aircraft, the Boeing 737-900ER Extended Range Narrowbody Jetliner Aircraft on routes from Atlanta, Georgia to Aruba, Baltimore, Maryland, Birmingham, Alabama, Charleston, South Carolina, Detroit Metro, Cancun, Mexico, Destin, Fort Walton, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Hartford, Hartford Connecticut, Kansas City, Missouri, Liberia, Costa Rica, Los Angeles, California, Miami, Florida, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, Nashville, Tennessee, Nassau, Bahamas, Newark, New Jersey, New York, JFK, Orlando, Florida, Portland, Oregon, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, Sacramento, California, San Jose, Los Cabos, Mexico, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Seattle, Washington, St. Kitts, Caribbean Islands, St. Lucia, Caribbean Islands, and Tampa, Florida, from Boston, Logan, to Detroit, Metro, from Cincinnati, Ohio, to Denver, Colorado, and Seattle, Washington, from Detroit, Metro, to Atlanta, Georgia, Baltimore, Maryland, Denver, Colorado, San Francisco, California, Sarasota, Florida, and Seattle, Washington, from Los Angeles, California, to Atlanta, Georgia, Guadalajara, Mexico, Orlando, Florida, Phoenix, Arizona, San Salvador, El Salvador, and Seattle, Washington, from Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, to Atlanta, Georgia, Baltimore, Maryland, Cancun, Mexico, Denver, Colorado, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Orlando, Florida, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, San Sacramento, California, and Seattle, Washington, from New York, JFK, to Atlanta, Georgia, Cancun, Mexico, Liberia, Costa Rica, Phoenix, Arizona, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Santiago, Dominican Republic, and Seattle, Washington, from Salt Lake City, Utah, to New York, JFK, Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington, and from Seattle, Washington, to Anchorage, Alaska, Atlanta, Georgia, Cincinnati, Ohio, Detroit, Metro, Las Vegas, Nevada, 
Los Angeles, California, New York, JFK, and Orlando, Florida, and Salt Lake City. Those are the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this mile review. I'd like to know if you got this mile or you plan on getting it. This mile is still available. I highly recommend snatch it up if you can. They are got a flaps down version coming, so if you plan on getting that, snatch that up. That price sell out real quick. But anyway, this is all I have for this mile review. Please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.